A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. We're in the middle of a string of parables in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is teaching and he's teaching through parables and we've just heard the scripture tell us why he's doing it to fulfill scripture. And he's giving us little thought puzzles and uh, Amy Jill Levine, you'll have heard me say many times, has told us that parables should unnerve us a little bit. So if you have too easy a reading or if you feel really great and undisturbed after you've heard a parable, then maybe you could think about it again and see if there might be something else in the richness of the parable that, that might draw your attention. But we get these two parables today of the kingdom and the parable of the mustard seed. Uh, first, one of my first memories from childhood in my church, uh, growing up outside of, inside of Detroit actually, was the parable of the mustard seed and they had us make little necklaces with medallions where we took one mustard seed and we put it in the middle of a brass ring and we melted some glass like thing and put it as a choker and we had this around our necks with the thought that with our faith even the size of a mustard seed we can move mountains and that was a compelling and helpful image to me as a child and if I'm not careful when I hear this parable of the mustard seed, I can think that Jesus is saying out of very small things can come great things, which is a great, a great message. But it's actually not quite the same thing in this parable, in this parable, which is a parable of the kingdom. Jesus is trying to tell us something about the nature of the kingdom of God. And you'll notice he says, a man went out to his field. So he has a field of crops that he's hoping to cultivate. And it's as though he sows this mustard seed, which is a tiny little seed, but it grows up and it actually becomes a tree with birds and all this stuff in the middle. Well, is that really something that you'd want in the middle of your field of crops? Most crops don't do well with trees stuck in the middle of them. And so it has this quality of something invasive almost. Same with the woman at the parable of the woman and the yeast in the, in the flower. I've heard some scholars say that the amounts that are mentioned in this are ridiculous. No baker would ever do this. And, and the text actually says in other translations, the woman hid the yeast in the flower. And then it speaks again as Jesus is sort of wrapping up the section about the hiddenness of, um, of the kingdom. And so I think what Jesus is trying to tell us something about in these two parables is about the way that the kingdom of God can kind of sneak up on you. It can be hidden in the midst of other ordinary things, ordinary things like your field of crops, ordinary things like your, your flour for your bread making, that the kingdom is hidden in ordinary things and comes to wild and rancorous life out of those ordinary circumstances. He taught in parables. That's a good excuse sometimes for us not to really understand or totally grasp on to what he's saying to us. But I hope that this day we can think about what this might mean in our own context. If Jesus is saying that there's a hidden quality to the kingdom of heaven, that the kingdom of heaven is hidden amidst and amongst ordinary things, can we be sensitive enough as faithful people seeking Christ to perceive where it is that the kingdom is breaking out? To see when a wild mustard bush and then tree erupts in the middle of our nice orderly field, 
that this might be something of God's doing, that this might be something of the fruition of God's kingdom coming into being in our very midst. May God give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear in those places where God is trying to surprise us from the hidden places in the ordinary things in our lives. And may God bless you and may God keep you this day and always. Amen.